Hey guys, it's Mike Chen here in Los Angeles. As you know, I absolutely adore Filipino food. I feel kind of bad because I didn't know there was a whole Filipino town here in Los Angeles. I knew there was one in New York, but it's supposed to be over two square miles. That's a lot of Filipino food. And the first place I... It's closed. It's... Everyone I talked to told me I had to try this place. It's supposed to taste like Filipino barbecue and a Southern barbecue got together and had a baby. That would have been a delicious baby. Not that I go around eating eggs. Anyways, I'll try to find out more information about that, but I know where we're gonna go next. All right, this place I've been talking to with uh, some of my Filipino friends in LA, and they all say this is amazing as a must try. So this place is called Dollar Hits Temple, and it's basically Filipino street food, night market food, all, all here. Do you have the barbecue? 4.30. Huh? 4.30. 4.30? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'll come back at 4.30, thank you. All right, good news and bad news. There is barbecue, but it's at 4.30, so be back in three hours. What? It says it's open. Ah. Oh. It feels like the food gods are mocking you inside of Heaven's Kitchen. Third place I've been to that I see they're closed where it doesn't have the thing I was looking for. If there's no food here, you will see me collapse. So this is the outdoor dining area for Kubo. Paxio. Milkfish. Oh, milkfish is good. I'll make you try this. This okay. barbecue pork. Chris is helping me out right now, but she, she's a little too shy to be on camera. But thank you so much. This is chicken. Oh, yes. All right, while I'm waiting for the food, I just want to give a huge shout out to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. You guys heard me talk about Surfshark VPN a lot. It's something I utilize every single day because right now our whole lives is, is basically online. There's always people trying to have access to your information. You got Surrey, Alexa, everyone's trying to eavesdrop on you, selling you stuff. So what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts all your information before it goes over the internet. So the people you don't want having access to your personal information won't have access to it. Also, Surfshark VPN has something called HackLock ID. So if someone's trying to access something like your email, you're gonna get notified right away. And if you feel like you watched everything on Netflix, you have not. Did you know Netflix and other countries have vastly different video libraries? So you can utilize Surfshark VPN to kind of trick Netflix into thinking you're actually over there. So you can watch more shows and movies. So if you wanna give this a try, use my link down below and my promo code Dumpling. You're gonna get 83% off your order and three months for free. Also, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like anything about the service, get your money back. Look at this, giant pieces of chicken skin chip. Oh, I love this. I don't know why you all are still munching on potatoes. Try a chicken chip. This is so great because after that wonderful crunch, you start tasting the fat. Personally, I don't know why more people aren't eating chicken skin chips. I mean, when you eat fried chicken, what's the best part? That's right. I'm gonna dip it in a little vinegar too. That is, oh yeah. <coughs> the vinegar went in the wrong pipe there. Oh, that is just a perfect combo. 
come here, get some fried chicken skin, dunk it in this miraculous vinegar sauce. I have not seen a calamansi in such a long time. Put that over the barbecue skewers. Oh, that is so good. People sometimes ask me, why do you like to eat so much? First of all, it's yummy, obviously. Secondly, food for me is like, is, is like a memory. So for me eating something like this here in LA, it just kind of brings me back to, you know, the night markets, walking around Manila or Davo. It's all connected. So when I'm tasting something like this, wherever I am, it just brings me back to a good, happy food place. Mm. Senegal is one of my favorite things. This thing is made with salmon, Belly. Fattiest part of the salmon. Mm. Oh yeah. First of all, if you love salmon, try a salmon belly. I don't care if you grill it, you put it in soup, whatever you do to it, it's just so good. And this thing, the salmon belly right between the meat and the skin, it's just this melt in your mouth layer of yummy fat. It's like if pork belly was seafood. Wow, so good. I love Senegal. Sour soup, especially when you pair it up with a meat that is very fatty like a salmon belly. Oh, and the sourness of the soup is so delicious because it's not just vinegar, because the sour flavor usually comes from tamarind, which is tangy and delicious. You have got to try this when you come here. I cannot pronounce this. They told me this name like three times. I can't pronounce it, but it's milkfish and it's in a sour broth. But this broth, unlike the synagogue, there's no tamarind in here. The sourness comes from vinegar. Yeah, the sourness is much sharper and there's a less of a sweet element to it. This is punch me in the face good. Why is punching me in the face good? It's just that good. Wow, this is delicious. The, the two soups, you have to try the two soups when you come here. All the food here, this is really your mom's kitchen or your grandma's kitchen. Stuff that would come out from the kitchen of a Filipino mom or a Filipino grandma. Wow. The fish, first of all, it's so meaty and tender and nice because there are some bones in here. You just gotta watch out for that. It's really such a meaty fish. And again, just like the salmon belly right below the skin, you got that fantastic layer of fat. It's gonna be less fatty than the salmon belly, but you taste that slightly gelatinous, melty texture. And all that soaking in a vinegary broth, it just tastes like the whole world is in balance. Such a comforting soup. They just brought this out. This is called the Shanghai Lumpia. Look at this dipping sauce. Sweet and sour sauce with a load of floating chilies. These are some mind-blowing, reality-altering spring rolls. First of all, this skin is so thin, and just listen to this crunch. The sound is so subtle because these layer of skin, it's just breaking apart without any effort at all. Inside, fatty, delicious, minced pork. This, I'm gonna put on the must-try list. 10 out of 10. Wow. Oh, what is this? This one, we call it okoi. Okoi. Yes, it comes with a bean sprout, tofu, onions, sweet potato, and squash. Oh. And this one in pork intestine. Pork intestine? Yes. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Annie. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you. This, awesome. this is life changing. Thank you. You can't go to the Philippines without eating some sort of esau. Usually it's chicken, but pork? I love pork intestines, and this is amazing. Wow, not gonna lie, if you never had pork intestines before, this is not elementary stuff. Pork intestines, just like the 60s, it's gonna come with a little funk. But that aside, the outside, they toasted the outside so it has that slight charred crunch, and the inside, so tender, and it melts. There's so many dishes in this place that just, my love's melting. How do I, like, <laughs> I think, this place is so good. It's like a bite of different veggie fries. A little sweet, a little sour from the vinegar. 
but everything remains so delicate. The big textural change is with the tofu. Fried to golden perfection on the outside, but the inside ain't nothing but tenderness. What a good place. Also, that amazing, friendly Filipino hospitality. You'll definitely find that here as well. cantaloupe juice. I didn't know this was a thing like in the Philippines, but every single Filipino restaurant has it here. Oh, so good. Cantaloupe juice and honey because cantaloupe juice, it's just not sweet enough. You gotta add the honey. No, I'm actually serious. It's much better with the honey. I mean, you see how beautiful this is, right? Like I am just, I, I want to offer it gifts and build a statue for it somewhere. The skin, ah, oh, look at this. To call it a thing of beauty will be insulting it. That's the lightest pork skin chip you will ever have. This side of hog heaven. I mean, this is a chip. You hear this, right? Oh, that is toasty and crispy. I don't even know what kind of wizardry they, they use to make it this crunchy. And a layer of fat sandwich between the meat and the skin and the dipping sauce. Go get some spring rolls first, wet your appetite a little bit, come here and get this. Also, this is another reason why I love Filipino people. This is considered an appetizer. <laughs> That's right, it's an appetizer. It's like watching a whole Marvel's movie and calling that a preview. Oh, oh and they made their own Cinemac. This is a chili vinegar sauce. I think you definitely need something like this. Oh, accidentally flooded my plate a little bit. Love it. Oh, that's so good. You know, before this whole thing started, like, let's go into the Philippines like once a year. So I miss the food so much. And this right now, taking a bite of this, this brings it all back. You want a sense of what that's like? Come here and get that. I never had a seasick that's kind of like this gooey before. This is definitely different than all the other seasicks I've had. Wake fatty girl. Like big old chunks of fat, really eggy and supremely tender. It's not as crispy as the ones I typically like, but make no mistake though, that is good. There's big old chunks of fat and skin in here. So you get that great gelatinous texture. I wish it was a bit more crispy, but this one, you can definitely taste the different pieces of the pork more. See, like you never usually get like a fat piece of pork like this. This is reminiscent of like a very pork filled omelet. Well, what I do like is, you are tasting the fat a lot more, and I like fat. But some people may not like the fat. So this one, the fat is much more pronounced. So if you're not into that, then this might be a little too different for you than a typical seasick. I like it though. Also, what's kind of missing is I'm not tasting much of the organ meat. I don't know if there's organ meat in here. I think there is. I think I'm seeing a little bit of it, or maybe I'm not, I don't know. I don't really taste it though. That is something I really like in my seasick. Still good, but with the buchana table, that's definitely the star. Also, this is the reason I came here. Mid-meal dessert. Still going for dinner later, but look at this thing. It's too pretty not to have like now. Another reason 5,821 why I love the Philippines. It's so colorful and the flavors are so aggressive and that just makes the food so good. A little piece of flan, grass jelly, ube ice cream. I think there's some sago in here, some tapioca. One of my favorite desserts in the world. And the number one reason I love this dessert, as good as it is, it doesn't fill you up. It's like refreshing. So you could eat this. You could take a midday eating break, eat a dessert. Do, it's like it's like a food intermission. So you can eat this, have some fun, and go eat more stuff later. Okay, so I'm back at this place uh, where I was at initially when I first got to Little Philippines. Apparently, 
you go buy your skewers and they'd have the barbecue outside. You can cook it yourself. Oh, wow, it's completely different than this morning. So all the dishes are gone. You got blood, pork liver. Okay, I gotta figure out how this works. So this is Paul, by the way. Line starts there. Yeah, just grab one. All right, what do you want? Chicken skin for sure. Get some chicken skin. How many? Uh, get three. Get some uh, pork belly. You want chicken feet? Maybe two chicken feet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a liver. Oh, definitely some pig, pig ear. You like pig ear? I've never tried it. You never had pig ear? I don't think so. It's good stuff. Pork, pig intestine. Oh, this is good stuff. This is the best, chicken yiso. She just put uh, some secret sauce onto our skewers. Yeah, everything. Family, family if secret. No secret huh? no good. If without it, it's no good? Yeah. Wow, okay, I, I'm excited. Woohoo! Melon drink, that's Grace. Let me tell you how everything works. So you go inside, you just grab the skewers yourself. Each skewer is only $1. And this drink, the melon drink, is also only $1. There's four grills being set up here. And you can just grill your own stuff like they're doing over there. Look at this. Look at these guys being all professionals and stuff. Look, look, look all the stuff they're grilling. You got a lot of innards. Yeah. <laughs> right now, we're waiting for the, uh, the uncle to fire up our grill right there. We can get to cooking, but in the meantime, look how bright this melon juice is. This is so good. Yo, try it, try it, try it. That is really good. Mmm. Mm. Right? Things that are unnaturally bright orange taste delicious. I'm a little afraid. It's a burnt mess. I mean, this is the best we could do. The fire was unexpected. It was not part of the plan. A lot of the stuff got burnt. I mean, this is, oh, those are really burnt balls. How is it? Let me know. Crispy. <laughs> I don't know if this is good. I think it's good. I choose to believe. This is the one I'm really worried about, whether the pork belly actually cooked or not. That's delicious. Seems good. This is by far the funnest way I've eaten a Filipino meal in a long time. Like this is reminiscent of actual street food in the Philippines. Oh, chicken skin's good. Yeah. I mean, it's very burnt. Hope you like bitterness, because you could be tasting some of that. But I like it. Mm. Did your parents ever tell you if you eat, eat, eat anything burnt that's meat, you're poisoned? Did they tell you that too? Mm -hmm. Like you just can't do it because yeah. you're poisoning yourself. Mm -hmm. I thought that was only me. Yep. Pig intestines. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yum. Yum with a pink hint of funk. How good is that intestine? Everything, everything is crispy, right? Yeah. How good is, that's the best one. Good. All right, this was good. Come here, try this out. Fun experience, delicious food. Just watch the fire. Don't turn your dinner into like a food cremation. And get this, it's just so pretty and good. The next day. Question for those of you who live in Los Angeles or, or Phoenix or 
places that have sunny days a lot. I know a lot of people like the sun, but isn't this like just way too much? Like every day, it's kind of like the same. It, it doesn't rain, it, it doesn't get cloudy, it just, the sun is there. Isn't that too repetitive? Also, when do you get to eat your hot pots? Like you can't be sitting at home inside eating a hot pot like on a day like this. I mean, I guess you could, but it's not as enjoyable as a rainy day. Anyway, good morning. I'm here in Los Angeles, Koreatown, because I just got a huge craving for jajangmyeon. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's a funny story, actually, how I know about this place. This place is called uh, Zama. Anyway, so so a couple years ago, um, I was I was I just started the Eat with Mikey channel. So I really wanted that channel to be kind of me eating with other personalities, YouTubers, interesting people, whatever. And I really wanted um, Ryan Higa on the show because oh, thank you. I I, I love Ryan Higa because I think that guy's an absolute comedic genius, and I, I love everything he does. So I was a huge fan. So I really wanted Ryan on the show, and I got really lucky because he was with uh, Arden at the time. So I I, I was able to get both him and Arden together, which was just amazing uh, eating experience. And they chose this place and I loved it. The food is great. Um, they were both really, really just everything you expect from, from those two. It was a fun, interesting conversation. But then like, I really didn't want to start releasing videos on that channel until I had like a, a few lined up. So then I started traveling again. Um, it just, life happened and it's got put off more and more. And by the time I wanted to just release it on Strictly Dumpling, I really couldn't do it anymore because it was so outdated. Anyway, that's how I found out about this restaurant. And that's one of my biggest uh, production regrets was not releasing that video at least somewhere on time so yeah I've always been feeling bad about that I don't know if I'm the only one who, who's like this but I cannot start eating my jajangmyeon without my sweet and sour pork I totally forgot to have the spicy challenge it goes through one to ten and I want it spicy so I'm gonna add some chilies in there Mm, swimming powder pork is so good. Oh yeah, thank you. There we go, spice level eight. I can't remember what I got last time, but I remember whatever I had last time wasn't that spicy to me. This is spicy. Level eight, it's definitely very spicy. Now I think about it, I think last time I only got level five. Swiss sharp pork definitely helps though. So. I think since the curry challenge, sorry, there's like construction on the road. I've been pretty weary of tackling any super spicy dishes. This one, very doable. I mean, level eight, I don't even think I'm sweating right now. One more thing, then I'm good. Thank God for the sweet and sour pork. By the way, that thing is so crispy. I feel like getting some soup after the noodles. And there's a place a couple minutes from here. Let's see if I can grab a soup for the road. Hello, can I get a soup to go? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Woohoo! Been wanting to try this place forever. I love the bone broth soup in LA's Koreatown. I love it. I couldn't ever find anything close to this stuff, even in New York. Creamy bone broth with brisket. And typically, this stuff, they don't add salt in there, you do it yourself. I think that's what they did. How many times in your life have you taken a sip of soup with really not much salt in there and still think it's magical? That is everything I want in my soup. Throw some salt in there. Also, you got dipping sauce for your meat. That'd be pretty much perfect. Mm. Couple of sips. I already feel my body healing. I put my body through some stuff. I'll be the first one to admit it. Also, my tummy was on fire from the noodles before. This thing just calmed everything down. Tasting this, you could swear there's like milk in the bones. It's naturally creamy and so soothing. This is probably my last meal here in Los Angeles before I head off to Vegas. I don't know why, it's just, maybe it's a mental thing when I'm eating soup or whatever. I just feel so calm, like I feel less stressed. 
eating something like that. I was really trying to pack a lot into not a lot of time, but it was great being back here in LA. And this is one of those cities where I feel like, where I wish I could spend more time, like get a place here for a couple months and just explore it further. Maybe once it's all safe and clear. And as always, all the places I went to, listen down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.